God, he's interceding for me. I, you know, he interceded for a woman taken in the very act of adultery. When he did, he, he interceded from the transgressors that wanted to convict him. The very people that didn't believe, the religious people that was going to throw the stones at this woman, he interceded. We intercede today for people. The church, the body, we intercede for the lost. When the lost confess Jesus, he becomes the interceder. We're just, we're a witness here today. We're a witness in the world. And I thank God, and I can tell you a false doctrine that's out there. And I, I, I you know, I, I don't criticize a lot of other churches. I don't. I, I don't go with the name over the door. But if anybody thinks they can get their sins forgiven from some priest, they got the wrong lineup. It's got to be Jesus. This knocking on the door or sliding some window open and asking that father to forgive me. My dad couldn't even forgive me all the things I did as a child. But I'll tell you, Jesus Christ will forgive you. He placed us here as intercedents. We have to talk to the lost. And you got our brother. That's what we pray for. Thank the Lord for all of them. And I'll tell you, I've got one person a spiritual father who intercedes for me. Jesus Christ, God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit. Seemingly people want to go everywhere else. The world can't fix itself. The world has tried, whether it be politics, Black Lives Matter, white supremacist, communism, the American way, God is going to prove himself. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life. It don't go nowhere else. You can work and improve yourself. You can get away from being an alcoholic maybe. They say once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. We've been through that. I can tell you, Lord, you're not an alcoholic now. You're a Christian. You're saved by grace through faith. Not of yourself. God give you a gift. I, I, I tell you, you look into the world today, everybody wants to help you some way except the name of Jesus. Fly a helicopter over. Throw some money out. Economics is going to do great. I'll tell you what's going to stand. The church is going to stand when the world's on fire. That's what's going to happen in this world. She'll stand and there'll be a second coming. And I'll tell you, the fire and the flames in, uh, it's going to be hot. I'm preaching hotter than a lot of people do, but it's going to be hot. Even the elements are going to melt with a fervent heat. I, I just believe it. Y'all go ahead. I, <laughs> and I, I, you don't have to just testify once. There ain't no change on you. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>
The angel said, you know, I know who seek me. Oh, for he is risen. Then she heard him say, The stone is rolled back on. The tomb is empty gone. To say that is for the sun. Gone. Over death, triumph, and gone. Sin is defeated, gone. If you don't know Christ my Savior, my So you want? So you're still going in order here. The next one.
come back. God bless you so much. And I want to say this before you think uh, I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to eat. If you can't go downstairs we'll fix you a plate where you can eat it up here. Take it home. If you came in, you're welcome to stay. There's plenty of food. It's fellowship. It's not just eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow you die. This is we want to eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy our life. Okay? So I want to invite all of you to stay, no excuses. I definitely know I'm going to stay. There'll be plenty of cake. I saw it down there. <laughs> along, with the, along with the church, and that is a surprise. I didn't expect to get a birthday cake. But you guys make me cry. It ain't often, but it does happen. I was told when I was a kid to cry, you'd weep, bump around, yeah. dad thump you on the head, and oh, shove you around, give you something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you when I got saved, I couldn't quit crying. The Lord come into my life, it was just all that. Man, it feels good. I'm going to read a few verses, won't hold you too long, I'm afraid if I. Go much after 12, Roger will starve to death. He done been out there once. Yeah. If I need food with a finger hole in it, you know who you need. I'm going to read a few verses here out of Matthew 5, and we'll start in verse 17, and then we'll just touch some 
highlights of Revelation. <laughs> Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to use a few notes that I took. And I'm going to relate right to the end of time. One, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. This is in Revelation 21. The old heaven and the old earth shall pass away. There'll be a new kingdom, the kingdom of God coming down. The new Jerusalem, they call it. Or the Bible calls it. Now, in this world today, the politics cannot take care of this universe. Not just the United States of America. The political realm of the world today, and don't get me wrong, I'm not an anti-government democracy. That's not me. That's not it at all. But if today you notice the people that are standing up against the government... They're also standing up against just people. Burning houses, burning towns, looting, because the law cannot take care of all of it. And this part of the law and God fulfilling is just what we see biblically defund, take money from the police, and this is where we are today. And according to the Bible, because iniquity abounds, this world is going to wax worse and worse. Get ready. I'm not preaching fear to you. I'm not preaching that it's going to get so bad we can't survive. That's not what I'm preaching. But I'm preaching the facts that when we get into Revelation, one of the first things we need to realize is that the Antichrist is not coming. He's here already. Right. He's coming as though he's on this white horse and he's doing these great things, but when the government itself cannot use the name of Jesus and the churches that are supposed to be the body of Christ and him in the head allow the things to go on in the pulpit, and sanctify and call these things right that are all wrong. You can get into this. I, I'm going to use this on a little brief. In the White House itself, there's a lady who put up a flag in the Congress Hall at her office representing the gay LGBTQ transgender and she took pride in that. There's another lady, her name's Marjorie Green. I follow her a little bit. She went right across from her office and put a big poster up that said male, female, no other gender. I've said this many times. When you hold that, when that doctor holds that baby up, it's a boy, it's a girl, and it don't change. I'm not preaching hate to anyone. I'm not preaching the fact 
that we hate, wound, or hurt people. But this is what the Bible says. If we're going to live our Christian life, we must believe God's Word. It is true and it will stand when the world's on fire. The Antichrist has many different angles of life. One thing he wants to call, as Brother Roger and many mentioned, he wants to call wrong right. He wants to come in, or they want to come in because there's many as preaching and teaching that everyone is equal. This social system that everyone, I tell you when you're equal is when you're born. You come into this world with nothing and you're going to leave this world with nothing. There'll never be a U-Haul behind the hearse to carry all your valuables to the graveyard. It ain't going to happen. Second of all, let's look at the world today when the revelation of the book will tell you about all this heat and all the things in the sea that are beginning to die. Right now in California, Portland, Oregon, and Death Valley, the temperatures are as high and higher than there's ever been. The Bible in Revelation relates to the destruction of the earth and the world within itself. Now in the sea that he talks about that will give up the dead, in one day, the very marine life, thousands, billions of mussels, thousands and thousands of fish are being washed up to the shore because Revelation describes it as wormwood and it's poisoned water. It's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Now, I, 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 I see you quiet, but I, I want you to know where we are today. If you're not saved, you need to be saved. If you haven't given your life and accepted God in your life at the name of Jesus Christ, you need to do that. You need to really get hold of what we got because the judgment day is coming and it's not just, well, I know the songs say it may be today, it may be tomorrow, and you better be ready. The earth and everything therein is being fulfilled. The second seal that was spoken of in, in, in Revelation is that people will take peace. If you read this, and I try to try to keep up <clears throat> or stay ahead or however, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Have you ever heard or seen the like of gang wars today. People are actually killing one another. A record was set just recently in New York, Chicago, Illinois, of where people are rising up and shooting one another. The anti-police and the police trying to defend themselves, this is all the signs of the time of where the world is waxing worse and worse. Along with the third seal that's been opened, famine. Here uh, in the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and he beheld a black horse, and all of these measure of barley for a penny. See not you hurt the oil or the wine. Seems like there's still plenty of oil. You pay more for it. And the wine gardens are still growing just fine. But how about peace and safety? How about the world today where we have adjusted and had to advance our life just to look over our shoulder everywhere we go? Who do you trust? Trust in the Lord and the power of His might. I've said this, trust is hard to earn but very easy to lose. If we go to the fourth seal in the six seals, I looked and behold a pale horse. And the name of them was Death and Hell followed him. 
And the power was given to the earth to kill with the sword with hunger. Have we not heard about this today? The famine. We live in the United States. I understand that. And we're a blessed nation. But I'll tell you, the nation that turns against God shall be turned to desolation. People, Ethiopia, Asia, they're starving to death. People, you talk about the west side, people need the Lord. That's what they need. You can feed someone and God bless. It's good to help others and to do things. But there's such a drought now, I see in, in, uh, in California and some of the major watering places of the world where the big boats that sit on the banks, the water has receded to where they've just fallen into the ground. California does not have water. And another thing's predicted is fire upon the face of the earth that will destroy one third part. California is burning to the ground. It's spreading right on over into Portland, Oregon. And I can tell you, just look at the signs of the times the earth itself is devouring itself, but there is one group of people that will be set free. I am free, and I'm free indeed. Amen. Amen. I live in this world, but I'm not of it. I tell you, as he said, we feel sorry for people, the homeless people. God help the homeless people, and we help people as much as we can. But people need to realize if they turn against God, the entire nation will be turned to desolation. It's sad. It's sad. In the sixth seal, it talks about the end of time. We're living in the sixth seal. And in the seventh chapter, he talks here how that we are all still living in the seals. A seal doesn't just come and end. The Antichrist didn't come and that's the end of it. Famine didn't come and that's the end of it. The earth in its heat and the, and the fire and all the flame, that didn't happen it's just over with. We live in all these seals today. We're still there. <laughs> Thank God I'm free. Great earthquakes. You ever seen the like? Great earthquakes. Think of it. Just recently, another earthquake over here of a 6.7 uh, uh, earthquake magnitude. California again. Hollywood. Uh, and let me be careful. It is a state in the United States, and people that are there. There are Christians there, but I think we can get an idea of what I'm saying. I wouldn't go to California if they told me. I, I'm telling you, I ain't going. I, I just ain't going. I, I'm right here. I, I'm, I, God found me in West Virginia, and, and God blessed me with the church and, and, and people and a, a place that I can live and serve Him. And I, I can tell you, I ain't going down there. I You'd about have to be half naked just to be a part of California, I think. I put too many clothes on to do a commercial with that. The seven seal, here's where we are. In verse 9, Behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hand, cried with a loud voice, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne to the Lamb. And all the angels stood about, all the throne, all the elders, all the four beasts fell before the throne, and worshiped the Almighty God. That's where we'll be. This is going to be the end. When every living creature that's died believing in God, all the angels of heaven, Brother Butch asked me, what a, 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 a sheriff, right? 
And I said, I'll tell you what it is. It's one of them UFOs they ain't figured out. It's God's creation. He's up there. The the the, the sheriffums, the, the 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 angels and and cherubims and all that heavenly host is up there just having a time and the world can't figure it out. They're not coming on a spaceship and there's not another man that's ever been created other than first was Adam and here we are from it and that's another deceiving thing that the world is trying to teach you. They can fly to the moon, the sun, the stars, wherever they want to go. I believe in Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. I <laughs> but I love people. I love people. I don't hate anybody. I can say that from the bottom of my heart. And, and Paulette, I tell you, you've come a long way, baby. I, I don't, when she first come in here, she just had. Mm -hmm. And I count, since she's been here, there's been 9, 10, 11 people sometimes come because God saved her. And when she sets you there with your mother, with what I know, God has blessed you all both. God has certainly blessed you. And I don't think you'll ever forget it. Who loves me the most? He whom I forgave the most sins. That's not to say how you felt that you were the worst in the world. But God saved you from your sins. And we don't want to forget that. When he opens the woes, I'll tell you, in this book of Revelation, in chapter 8, he begins to pronounce the trumpet sounds and the woes upon the earth. He mentions the earth and the trees and the grass to be burned up. Look at California. They can't put a fire out. When that fire is raging in this world today, whether it be a home, when that tornado or that great wind comes through and those houses are torn up and gone, you can't stop it. God doesn't individually pick you or that particular place. God is letting us know the end of time is near. It pays to be ready. So where are we today? We're here to worship the Lord. God has brought us joy in salvation. The enemy wants to take away your joy. Steal your Holy Spirit. Oh, as, as Stephanie testified in her learning, God is here. God is here. Where is he? But she learned God is here, and he's here all the time. He will never leave me or forsake me. He will be with me all the way, even unto the end. He's going to judge me. No man has the authority in this life to cast judgment upon me. We have the right to discern evil from good. You can eat <coughs> of the trees of life, but don't eat of the tree of good and evil. And that's where the church is leading itself, wanting to eat of the tree, have a little good, have a little evil, but then you're going to be cast out of the garden. You can't have both. Live it right. Do it right. And when the Lord comes back, 
when the graves burst open, all those who are in the graves shall come forth, some to the resurrection of life, and some to the resurrection of damnation. Some will be cast in a lake of fire, and some will meet the Lord in the air forever. 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 Forever and ever and ever. Time will be no more as we see it a forever, forever. Don't miss your opportunity. Sister Pauline, come on up. We're going to have an altar song for anyone that wants to pray. We're going to go downstairs and we're going to eat like we can't eat tomorrow.